So last time we looked at signals in SolidJS and we compared and contrasted them with state in React. Um, we talked about the developer experience, some trade-offs and so on. If you missed it, I'll put a link up here. Today, um, the people who make Quick Builder IO reached out and said, hey, do our signals. Um, what pitfalls do you experience? What's the developer experience like? How does that compare to React? Um, let us know. So I figured let's just do it together publicly. Let's make a video about it. Um, if you haven't yet got the chance to play with Quick, I do think it is one of the best ways to build user interfaces on the web. The reason I think that is because it is very small and ships less code over the network and is just pretty intelligent about the way it uh, splits code. Um, if you missed that video, I'll put a link up there to the Quick video. But in this video, we're going to explore signals and Quick and talk through some of the developer experience uh, and compare it with React. Now, the reason we compare it with React is because React is very, very popular and used everywhere. It's not necessarily because React is the best. It's just very common. So it should give us a good basis for understanding. Okay, with that, let's get into it. We have an empty page and we'll recreate the example from last time. So what I want to do is a div with an H1 that says, hello world. Um, good. And now we'll use some state. So we'll do um, name, right? And we'll use signal contagious um, and we'll replace this with name now we can't just do this because i guess we can but actually it's name dot value okay but signal i guess does some magic to get the value we can keep it like this um cool now let's add an input to update this input type text value is name and on input we'll do um set now, how do we name dot value? We just assign it like this, save. Uh, so now it should be cool, it works. Um, it works, but we need to talk through some things here because Quick has a slightly different API. Let's talk about it. So if we come to VS Code, what we see is this on input dollar. Um, in Quick, the dollar sign says split whatever functions in here, split it out into another module and lazy load it on demand. Um, and as a result, Quick will only load JavaScript when you need it and not ship everything, even if it's never used. Pretty cool. More info in the Quick video uh, that I did before. I'll put a link to that under the like button if you want to check out more about how Quick works. But we're comparing these signals to SolidJS and React. Now, one of the things in SolidJS was you can take your create signal function call and declare your signal anywhere. Um, this presented a problem to me where I could have my signals live somewhere else and not know where the reactive properties start or are initialized and, you know, like have to keep like a dependency graph in my mind. I talked about this in the last video. Um, let's see how that works in quick. So if we come here, and if I say use signal outside of a component, for example, um, it doesn't let me. It's like, no, you have to co-locate it. And this was one of the things I liked about React, co-locating state and UI with use state. You can only do use state in a component. I like this, this is pretty nice. So let's bring it back. Um, and let's look at how that fine-grained reactivity works. So what we might do is, you know, we'll do a UL uh, and we'll do array.from and we'll do some like ridiculous length. Um, 10,000 and we'll map over this and do li and we'll just do math.random. So now the theory is um, if everything we render is these numbers change all the time. And as we can see, quick gives us fine grained reactivity, meaning when state changes, only the little piece changes. The rest of the component doesn't re-render. This was a weakness in React that just kind of re-renders everything. Uh, so this is pretty nice. The fine-grained reactivity, I'm here for it. Um, there are some pitfalls that I experienced though. Um, and I think let's just take a look. So again, if you have an object with use signal, you have issues. Um, the way to do it in Quick is to use a function called use store. But of course, not everybody reads the doc. So let's explore some of that. So there's with the use signal, let's say we have an object where the key is, you know, first and then last, right? Kumar. And so far, it's not such a big deal because we just do name.value.first. Name.value.first, we assign it here. Um, and we'll do name.value.first and then name.value.last. Save that. This will reload and we can see that we've opted out of reactivity. Um, we've opted out of reactivity because we're updating a property in the object. We're not updating the object itself. And that then doesn't trigger the setter and it doesn't trigger fine grained reactivity. So again, similar with solid signals, we've accidentally um, opted out of reactivity. 
Hmm. How do we fix it? We fix it by, instead of um, reassigning a property of the object, we just reassign the entire object. So we'll do name, we'll spread name, and then we'll just change the first one, which is kind of what we're trying to do here. Um, good. And now let's try this again. And we do have reactivity, but notice everything re-renders now. So that's a first. We've opted back into reactivity, but it's no longer fine-grained uh, because it's a new object every time the value of the state. Um, and so, yeah, this is this is definitely a pitfall as well. Um, but, you know, the quick docs are pretty good. They say you're not supposed to use objects with use signal, and this is probably why they suggest use store. So let's let's try that. So if we come here, instead of use signal, we swap this with use store. And notice immediately stores don't have this dot value thing. So we'll just remove that. Uh, but we'll maybe keep event.target.value. Does, does this work? Is this enough? Um, let's see. So Tejas, I don't have reactivity. I don't have reactivity. And that's because if we look at the code, I'm setting name, which is a const, to the object spread. Of course, this isn't valid. So we'll just set the property. Name.first equals, uh, yeah, exactly, event.target.value. Let's save. Okay, it works. We have fine-grained reactivity and everything's fine. Pretty nice. Now, one final test is the destructuring thingy that was a problem with signal. You cannot destructure um, reads from a signal. Um, similarly, you can destructure state in React because the component re-renders. And in solid, we saw when you destructure, you accidentally opt out of reactivity. Let's see how this looks in um, quick. So instead of this, we'll do first, last. And instead of name.first, we just remove all of this, right? Um, this will not work because we can't reassign a const. I, I, I see that. So this is never going to work because we're reassigning a const. But what if we do let? <laughs> right. Um, nope. Why is this red? Last is never, okay, fine. But we still opt out of reactivity, even with this. And I think as far as signals are concerned, we will always opt out of reactivity. I, I posted a tweet the other day asking why this is. Um, the answer is basically because this, we're assigning a new variable to Tejas. That's what's happening here. We're assigning first to Tejas. And then first will always be Tejas. And first we'll have no connection to the object at all. That's essentially it. So even though the object updates, we just have a let. Um, and this is why we accidentally opt ourselves out of fine-grained reactivity. Now, how does this compare to React? Really just watch the last video. There's a link under the like button, but React just re-renders everything. Um, so if you destructure it, nobody cares. Like the, the function is re-evaluated with the new state. Um, and this is why I'm still like a fan of React. I'm not saying one is better than the other. I get I got criticized a little bit on the last video saying this sounds just like an ad for React. Do the math, bro, uh, and, and so on. But I'm not necessarily saying one's better than the other. Um, but you know, React's intention is to have us not think about code and think about the interface instead. And React has lost this along the way with use memo and use callback and getting us in the details. But again, with the forget compiler, with the work being done, I think there's some type of initiative to go back to that. You think about UI and let React figure out the best way to get it there. Um, React presents an opportunity to create UI where I don't have to think about, is this destructure going to opt me out of reactivity? Or as we just saw, Am I going to keep the reactivity but lose the fine grainedness? Like these quirks don't exist. Um, and and maybe you know by maybe I'm just I've been writing React for so long that this feels natural, um, but maybe not. I I want to hear from you. Let me know in the comments um, or at me on Twitter. But for now, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.